2011 marks 50 years since Russian astronaut Yuri Gagarin took off in an R7 rocket to orbit the Earth and become the first man in space. Since then, the space sector has evolved dramatically. Now, hundreds of satellites orbit the Earth providing telecommunication systems, environmental data and astronomical observation. And there is a rotating team of astronauts living permanently on the International Space Station, carrying out a valuable program of scientific study. The European Space Agency, one of the main actors in space sector evolution, will be continuing to push forward these programs during 2011. In mid-February, the six-man Mars 500 team will simulate a landing on the Red Planet. Living in isolation since June 2010, they're helping to determine the key psychological and physiological effects of living in an enclosed environment over a long period of time. The study, lasting a total of 520 days, is designed to gather data, knowledge and experience to prepare for a real mission to Mars. February will also see the 200th Ariane liftoff. Since 1979, Ariane launchers have provided Europe's independent access to space, launching a full range of payloads, including Earth observation and meteorology platforms and exploration probes along with space telescopes. This milestone 200th launch will carry Europe's second ATV, automated transfer vehicle, named this time after German astronomer-mathematician Johannes Kepler. ATV is the largest vehicle supplying the ISS. It can deliver up to seven tons of cargo to the station, including food, drinking water, gases, research equipment and propellants. ESA astronaut Paolo Nespoli will be aboard the ISS to oversee ATV operations during his continuing six-month stay. He's the third ESA astronaut to spend so long living aboard the ISS and while there will carry out an intensive science program. With more than 30 experiments, the mission scientific program will cover human research, fluid physics, radiation and biology and technology demonstrations. He'll return to Earth in May. In the meantime, another ESA astronaut will join him. Roberto Vittori from Italy will be part of Space Shuttle Mission STS-134 as part of an Italian Space Agency flight opportunity to the ISS. Shuttle Endeavour will deliver AMS, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Attached outside the orbital complex, AMS will collect information from cosmic sources to search for evidence of antimatter to further advance our knowledge of the universe. After 12 days in space, Vittori will return to Earth on what should be the last but one shuttle mission. By mid-2011, after 30 years of service, the entire space shuttle fleet will be retired. In December, Dutch ESA astronaut André Kupers is also scheduled to reach the ISS on board a Soyuz spacecraft from the Russian Baikonur Cosmodrome. Presently in training, he will remain on the station as part of the six astronaut international crew until June 2012. ESA now has a secured flight plan until 2015 with one long duration mission per year. For ESA, more time in space means more and better science. Another development in 2011 will be the inaugural flight of the Soyuz launcher from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana, where a dedicated launch pad has been built. Soyuz, which has been launched over 1,700 times from Russia, is the historic rocket that launched the Sputnik in 1957 and was also used for Yuri Gagarin. The first launch of a Soyuz from French Guiana will allow air in space to accommodate all types of satellites or payloads through a complete family of launchers. Next to the heavy lift Ariane 5, Ariane Space will then be able to propose the medium lift Soyuz and at the same time this family will be enriched by the lightweight Vega whose facilities are being finalized in Kourou for a first launch also in 2011. Vega is designed to target the growing market for smaller satellites. With Arian, Soyuz and Vega, European access to space will be reinforced, combining performance and flexibility. In 2011, the Guyanese Soyuz will carry the first two operational satellites for the Galileo constellation. 
After two experimental satellites launched in 2005 and 2008, it's now the start of the in-orbit validation phase for the European Satellite Navigation System. In 2011, Europe will also see the payoff in terms of huge amounts of data from previously launched ESA missions. For example, the Planck astronomy mission launched in 2008 is allowing scientists to travel back in time and study the beginning of the universe. An extensive catalogue of images of individual objects in our galaxy and whole distant galaxies will soon be released. 2011 will also see an influx of data from Europe's Earth Explorers missions. GOCHE on Earth Gravity Ocean Circulation, SMOS on Soil Moisture and Ocean Salinity, and Cryosat monitoring thickness of ice sheets. For example, a first map of Arctic ice thickness will be released thanks to Cryosat data. All these observations from space are serious tools for a better understanding of climate change impacts on our fragile blue planet. All of ESA's continuing programs in 2011 will further the evolution of space science. 50 years after Gagarin's initial flight in space, astronauts and satellites have made the space sector increasingly recognized for generating innovation, economic growth, knowledge, better living conditions and a safer and more secure environment.